Okay, so now we're going to look at an example with uh, using epsilon and delta. Particularly this one's going to be working with delta. So if you're not sure what epsilon and delta are, you need to make sure you watch the video that was before this one that introduced the whole concept. I had a graph up and everything and kind of described uh, what all this means. Basically though, if you have a delta, that means that's your the difference, the amount that you're off in the x direction from your original x of zero. So this problem, what they want you to do is they're going to give you some kind of interval. In this case, they give us an interval from a to b is from one to seven. And they want us to draw that interval with x of zero inside. That's the first thing. So we're just going to draw a number line, given this information. And I have, uh, here's, my a is one over here. We'll start with that. Here's seven. Right here is two. Okay. Your open interval is going to be between one and seven. So this is the one right here that they're referring to. Okay, so they want you to sketch the interval from A to B. We did, from 1 to 7. X of O was uh, inside there. Then they asked us to find a delta so that basically it fits this. So your delta is going to be the shortest distance from X O to one of the two endpoints. So the closest distance from XO to the endpoints, that's going to be what your delta is. Why are we choosing the smallest distance? Well, if we, if we minimize the distance, the error in the X direction, that's going to uh, minimize the error, the error in the uh, Y direction there. So by making this delta as small as possible, we can guarantee that the, the difference from L will be the smallest possible. So that's why we're taking the minimum distance between these two. Okay, so if I do this, I have 2 minus 1 equals 1, and I do 7 minus 2 equals 5. So I, I basically just did this. I took x minus xo. That's exactly what I did here. I did, these are the x values in my interval. I subtracted the xo uh, from it. And basically the absolute value, you're only considering the positive distance. So even if I did 1 minus 2, you're technically applying the absolute value of that. You would still get the same values here, you get 1 and you get 5 for that. The minimum distance is going to be 1. So in this case, your delta is going to be equal to 1 because that was the smallest distance between XO and each of the endpoints. This concept we are going to come back to later on when we get into some proofs. There's one that we're going to do. We're actually proving a, um, a limit exists with a square root. And this kind of concept we'll have to use. So that idea we're going to come back to a little bit later.